Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Former White House Press Secretary and current MSNBC host Jen Psaki gave the Biden campaign some free advice on air this week. Let's watch. There is still this challenge the Biden campaign is facing that people, it hasn't settled into everyone that like Donald Trump is the actual other choice and that's the alternative and what that would mean for them. That there's still a fair number of people who aren't paying attention. That's p part of what they will argue. They have to move on from, from accomplishments and getting credit for accomplishments and make it all about the contrast of what a Biden and Trump presidency would be. You can see them moving into that stage, but I think there's a couple factors mm -hmm. at play here and it's really about bringing people home to who they pulled the lever for before. You know, that might not be bad advice, I'm gonna be honest, because clearly the American people are not buying the fact that Biden has all these accomplishments that the polls show on issue after issue, economy, immigration, et cetera, uh, that Trump is more trusted to handle these things than Biden, you know, clearly trying to gaslight the American people into thinking everything's fine with the prices of housing and food and everything else that like the the team that's in charge has this all under control nobody really does believe that nobody is persuaded by the i mean when i say nobody i mean the like pivotal swing voters who are going to decide the election in a handful of states so maybe that is the best strategy for dems just remind people that like it is biden or donald trump you didn't vote for donald trump last time because he's kind of obnoxious to a lot of people and here he is again I feel like that only works once though. Mm -hmm. 2020 was a very unique situation where you did have four years of Trump fatigue. Biden came in as the return to normalcy candidate. We're gonna put the adults back in charge. Mm -hmm. Aren't you just exhausted from all of the constant scandals surrounding this White House? And now we've had four years of Biden where actually things were way more chaotic than any of us anticipated. We're now involved in multiple wars abroad. The economy's really bad, there's people uh, pouring across the southern border. There's also this air of corruption surrounding the Biden family, so they're not the squeaky clean, squeaky clean Scranton people that we thought that they were. Hunter's currently on trial as well. And then on the flip side of that, you do have Donald Trump, who was just in court for, um, for months on end, and even then, the polls didn't change dramatically. So how is it that the Biden campaign can even more focus on Trump then he's already forced them to focus on him through the legal troubles. I mean, th this man raised $200 million in a matter of three days after a guilty yeah. conviction on 34 felony counts, uh, 70 million of which came from small dollar donors, 30% of which came from people who had no prior political activity. Well, yeah, look, his base loves him. You know, I hear over and over again, Republicans like, oh, or trying to say, oh, I wasn't even so in favor of Trump before, but now I would crawl through broken glass to vote for him. I saw that tweet over and over again. I'm like, nobody is, okay, I, I get it, dude. Nobody's like going out and putting broken glass in front of you to make, you could just walk to the polling place like everyone else. But his, his supporters, they act like they can vote for multiple times. They are fired up by this, I agree, by the trial. Everybody who loves Donald Trump loves him and is voting for him. But it, like, is it enough? Is he bringing new people? It, like, it wasn't enough last time. But that's is he where that thirty percent. the coalition. That's where that thirty percent number matters, though, because those are people who have not previously yeah. donated to a political candidate. Those are people who either sort of just—I mean, maybe they voted, but they were yeah. probably kind of apathetic. They weren't super fired I just up feel about like anybody. My, like my family can't be that anomalous. Yeah, you know, I come from Michigan, from like a kind of moderate Republican, not particularly religious, kind of libertarian Republican background. And uh, I, like, I know people who, right, they would vote for NER but Trump at this point. But they, they're not gonna vote for Biden either. Um, I mean, it speaks to the level, the double haters, you know, have you heard that yeah. phrase? I, I love it. I'm a double hater for sure. I'm like an infinity hater. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> triple hater, quadruple hater. Hate is just, you know, emanating from my very soul at this point. Um, yeah, it speaks to the, the, the high levels of dissatisfaction um, be, between these two candidates, but Trump won the process on, on the Republican side. There were challengers. DeSantis looked like he might have some traction at one point. Nikki Haley s stuck it out for a while, uh, not by that point really threatening Trump at all. Uh, Democrats didn't, I would say, didn't really have a real primary process, but they said, well, I mean, he's the incumbent. Usually the incumbent doesn't get an actual challenger. And it was not obvious that there was some, even if there's a lot of dissatisfaction with Biden among Democrats, like they don't like how old he is and they don't like the performance, they weren't so flocking to some other alternative candidate either. So what do you do in this situation? We're gonna have, a, we're gonna have an exact repeat of the last election 
um, for the first time in, in like a long time in history, I think. Um, or I think the only time ever where you have two people who've both served as president um, going up against each other. And the people, the American people are, maybe they're just tuning the whole thing out. Maybe they're like, I don't care anymore. Maybe. I guess going back to this strategy that's been put forth by Jen Psaki, the other issue with it is that at this point, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Yeah. I think his negatives are pretty baked in. Yeah. Um, Biden's have been increasing over the past four years. So in terms of negative momentum, it's on the side of Joe Biden. Um, and well, Joe Biden's biggest negative is his age, which does get worse. Every, every that is true. How aging works. <laughs> yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, Biden started his campaign in 2020 by repeating this lie about Charlottesville, that Trump failed to condemn neo-Nazis. Yeah. He's since given the, uh, the address in front of the blood-red background where he accused MAGA extremists of destroying democracy. And people don't want a negative campaign from Joe Biden. No. I mean, really, the people who went to the polls for Joe Biden in 2020 really set aside a lot of his divisive and negative messaging because they thought that once he got into office, he was going to be the unifier in chief. That obviously didn't happen. He's continued with a lot of this uh, negativity throughout the past four years. The country itself is in a quite negative state. And so doubling down on the sort of dark Brandon memes, I don't think is the yeah, answer but, but to Trump people's has, discontent. Okay, but the answer, Trump has constant neg like every he every word that but comes out point, of his mouth is negative right, and but divisive. That's the point. And is, I'm trying to be locked up by my political opponents. They hate this country. They hate you. They hate me. It's it's nothing but negative. But isn't that exactly the point that Biden should be the alternative yeah. to that? If he's messaging on the same exact way, then why would someone pick him over the guy who is negative but actually delivers when he's in office? It's just hate. But maybe they're trying to get my vote. As I said, I'm you know <laughs> so so many uh, hater on so so many fronts. Uh, you know, there's is there actually going to be? But it, is Trump going to be any different? Because like he did not accomplish. Um, a lot of what he said he would accomplish, the things I would like agree with, like we need to rein in the administrative state. We need to make uh, life easier for um, small business owners. We need to not strangle with that, them with bureaucracy and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, he talked about having a, a less interventionist foreign policy. I have no idea if he would do a single thing differently from Biden on Ukraine or Israel. I don't. I, I, it's just, I mean, he's not talking about it. He, I think he correctly knows he might as well say nothing because what Biden's doing on it is so unpopular. But, and he's just going to shut up about it. But I would genuinely like to know what different actions would have been taken if he was president. Because there is, unfortunately, tremendous continuity, especially in our, our, our foreign policy and in our spending. You know, Republicans have no credibility on reigning in spending. We laugh if we think of them doing that. They're never going to do that. Um, so I don't know. I, there are things he could do as president that I that I would support. There are things Joe Biden could do as president that I would support. He's just, you know, not doing those either. Yeah, it is funny that Trump did talk about reigning in the administrative state again during his recent Time Magazine interview. Yeah. And the reaction to that was for everyone on the left to call him a fascist. Yeah. So. Uh, Biden just had a Time Magazine uh, interview uh, uh, the other day, which did not go well. Unintelligible um, was written three times in the transcript, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. More free media right after this. Thank you.